located among some of the most prized real estate of the Arizona desert. So it's a home that looks unlike any in its vicinity because it was built in midair. We've seen a house cut into the side of a 200-foot cliff, a hillside home built on stilts, and one built high in a tree. David Ellsworth decided to build his house suspended 30 feet high over an 80-foot wide ravine. I like to do something a little bit different, and this is definitely a little bit different. It wasn't a practical solution, just a natural solution, so probably very impractical. Most of the homes in the Arizona desert look like this. So building a modern 2,600 square foot suspended home would be an ambitious undertaking for the construction crews. The plan, two master suites, a gourmet kitchen, two cantilevered balconies, a reflecting pool, and floor to ceiling windows to take advantage of the panoramic desert views. Just the idea of actually bridging the wash is kind of exciting. It's a large site that the architect could have chosen to build it anywhere on the site, but that he chose to build it over a wash makes it really extreme to me. It's never been done in Arizona. Nothing like this has ever been done. So how exactly do you build a house strong enough to prevent it from falling into the ravine below? You bring in Michael Johnson, an architect who knows how to build a bridge. If you go to Michael, you know you're going to get drama. There's, you know, he's not going to build you a little stucco house by the side of the hill. It's going to be something that people are going to talk about. David wanted his bridge home to have an ultra-modern look. And Michael wanted it to be ultra-strong. So when it came time to pick a building material, they chose steel. Two gigantic foundation beams started the suspension bridge. Then 14 support beams were laid across, and six column supports held up three massive 14-ton roof beams. The structure weighs in at nearly 50 tons. Since 80 feet of steel is too long to transport, the builders had to carefully weld two pieces together on site to create one solid beam. The beam is only as strong as its weakest point, as they say. And usually the weakest point is where it comes together. If the wells weren't strong enough, the beam would come apart and the house would fall down. So the guys had to take some extra precautions to make sure the structure doesn't fall apart at the seams. We bring out testers that come in and x-ray the beam to see if that there's any air pockets in it. The wells were good to go, and it was time to turn this bridge into a house. Except, the crew ran into an unforeseen snag. Their calculations were slightly off, leaving a gap between the end of a beam and its support. And that is gonna be right then. They had marked it on the ground, so it was in the wrong spot. One of the measurements was actually off by three inches. If this were a regular house on flat ground, three inches wouldn't be such a big deal. But for this house, it could be deadly. So the roof beam came off, and they started all over again. This time, it was right on the money. Yeah, David, it's Michael Johnson calling you. They've got the, the three roof beams up now, and they're going to do the last lift. It all fit like a glove. When the project was complete, David had his ultra-modern desert retreat, complete with sliding glass walls to make the most of his picturesque view from the bridge. Um, I'd say sexy. It's a sexy-looking house. 